you want to be a top level sim racer, the first thing you're going to need is a wheel. Right? I was watching an esports event on ACC a while back. It was a 90 minute race at Snetterton in GT3s with a seriously competitive field and tricky changeable conditions throughout. One driver who spent most of the race fighting inside the top 10 was Jason Lures, otherwise known as Black Gold Saw on YouTube. I'd never heard of him before this race, but was pretty impressed by his performance and my old friend the Boatley. After the race was over, I stumbled across his livestream and to my amazement, he was racing with a controller, using the chase camera. Now we've all seen the memes of people sitting on their own spoilers and driving the car from there, but I've always believed it is so much harder to drive in a precise fashion using this setup. A controller gives you a lot less feel, as well as limited movements and a smaller window to make adjustments. Now obviously, many arcade style racing games on the market are designed in a way that makes it easy and playable using a controller and this particular camera view, but racing sims generally put their focus into how it drives with a wheel and the cockpit view. It got me thinking, is this particular setup as much of a hindrance as I've always thought, or can you actually jump from a wheel to a controller and still drive competitively? As you might expect, I decided to find out. Oh, and I'm also going to throw a keyboard into the mix as well, as there are some phenomenally fast drivers who actually use a keyboard. Crazy. I decided to use ACC for this test to keep it as close to what Jason was doing as possible. I selected Silverstone as the venue and went with the Lexus, a fairly neutral car compared to many of the other GT3s. The plan? Complete a hot lap session using each of the different setups and see what's what. First up, my comfort zone. A Logitech wheel and pedals with the cockpit camera angle. Okay, I'm ready to do the first test. It's just going to be my normal setup, driving with a wheel and pedals. But um, yeah, let's just do a few laps on the wheel and kind of see where we're at. Lexus is not the best hot lapping car, but I still think we should be able to set a reasonable time. I've only actually raced the Lexus once on ACC, and it was at Silverstone. And yeah, it was, it was a nice car to drive. It's so, so good in the wet. It's just not the quickest over one lap. It feels a bit heavy and cumbersome sometimes, but um, as a kind of all-rounder, it's pretty good. With the steering wheel, I can be so precise with my inputs, aim for every single apex, every single curb. I don't need to worry about not being able to go where I want to go, um, unless I'm driving it wrong, but it's down to me at the end of the day, I've got full control over that. Now theoretically I should be able to do a low 57, high 56, I think, without any work on the setup or more practice. Um, it's kind of a, a steady pace that I should be able to get to in this car without too much effort normally. Again, a little bit scrappy through the last corner, but it's going to be a low 57. I'll do one more lap, just so we've done five, um, and then leave it at that. 57, 138. Ooh, lost the back end through Beckett's. So, yeah, so it's going to be a 57-1 uh, set on lap 4. As I say, without doing anything to the setup or spending too much time on it, I could probably get that into the 56s, maybe mid to high 56s. Uh, and then obviously with a bit of setup work or, bit, you know, colder conditions or a faster car, you'd be looking at low 56s, maybe high 55s. Um, so that's the wheel for you. Now let's see what we can do with the controller. So then, it is time to try out the controller. First time ever using a controller on ACC. I'm just leaving the settings all as completely default, so I've clicked gamepad. This is all as it uh, as it is, I haven't touched anything, and we're just going to give it a go. I'm very intrigued to see how this feels. So, obviously, in the spirit of this competition, we're doing it as chase cam. I don't know how to do far chase or close chase, probably that one. How do I actually start the engine? That's the next question. Okay, I've set some buttons. We've got gears. That's all fine. Oh, this feels so weird. Okay, let's see what kind of speed I can do with a controller and chase cam. It's going to be so difficult not to be janky with the steering inputs here. Alright, let's see. We're heading into cops for the first time. I'm going to break at the same point. Turn in quite aggressively, but actually it's not too bad. Carried a reasonable amount of speed through there. I should make it clear at this point, in my head, I I'm aiming to be within three seconds. That's the target. Whoa! If I can get within three seconds from this that I can on a wheel, I'll actually be fairly happy because I think that would mean I was semi-competitive in, in kind of public lobbies online. And obviously I'm not going to get used to this too quickly, so if, if I can get to that point today in a short amount of time, I'll take it. It actually feels okay so far, I'm not going to lie. Obviously it's way harder to be precise, but I've not changed any of the, the driving assists or the traction or ABS or anything. It's exactly as I had it. Uh, on the previous run, which was a kind of qualifying setup, so it should be quite tricky to drive. And, you know, I've not binned it yet, put it that way. Oh. Oops. That's my lack of um, control over the steering, so as soon as the back end went, I tried to correct it like I would in a wheel. But obviously, on a, key 
on a um, gamepad when you try and correct it, it's like a much bigger swing, an instant movement to the other side, so that's why I kind of jolted my way off the circuit and I've overheated the front tyres. And 204, exactly as I expected. I've gone in cockpit view for a second just so you can see how much more aggressive the steering inputs are. Look at that, when I'm just making tiny little adjustments. It's just like a totally different thing. There's some smoothing on it so it kind of helps you a little bit, which is really, really helpful to be fair. I'll go back to chase cam in a second. Oh, see that's not... Oh, game helps you out a little bit with that. You can see it was a lot smoother when I was actually losing control. I've also just had a thought. The, the chap I was talking about in the intro that I saw racing with the controller and the chase cam, he, I think he uploaded his um, controller settings that he uses. So what I might do is, uh, obviously I've tried it in de on default and I kind of know what it feels like and it's actually not too bad. What I'll maybe do is try his settings and see if you know, he found something with the controls um, to make it a bit quicker. So his settings were fairly different. He's also got steer assist disabled, which was definitely helping me out. This could get a lot harder all of a sudden, which I'm interested about. So I've got no excuses now. I'm using exactly the same controller setup as the, the chap I was talking about. And he managed to race competitively in a proper sim race using this exact setup. Lack of steering assist is actually helping me a little bit because it means I can kind of do more natural reactions to, to what happens with the car that I would normally do. And it kind of works, even though I don't have as much control over it. Another 204 there. You can see I'm using the tires a lot more because I'm kind of using the, the scrub and the, the turn in to, to get rid of the speed rather than the brakes and being smooth and keeping it as straight as possible to maintain speed. I'm kind of going in and lazily chucking the car into the corners and that's killing the speed for me, which is kind of what it feels like I have to do at the moment because it's kind of the safe option until I get a little bit more used to it and then I can start maybe being a bit more precise. Oh, see again, it's just leaning on the outside tires to scrub the speed. Terrible exit. Really, really overheating my front tires. It's a 201.9. Getting there. I think the biggest thing to get used to is the thumb movements on the analog. So I'm being like, I'm being quite kind of harsh with it. I think. I think the thing you would get good at would, would knowing exactly how much pressure to put on the analog stick. And you've got to be so so light with your finger to to get it to not steer too hard. And that's where all the lap time is going to come from. That's one thing as well. I'm not really thinking about my brake pedal modulation because it's just a trigger. I'm kind of just pressing it down, but I'm probably locking up a little bit. Um, so I maybe need to try and be a little bit more gentle on that as well. Thankfully, because it's hot lap mode, as soon as you cross the line, your tyres and brake temps and everything reset, so don't need to worry about overheating too much. I would be so, so happy if I could get under the two-minute mark, and that would mean I was less than three seconds off of what I managed on the wheel today. Um, that would be an amazing aim, but I just don't know if I'm going to quite get that far up. It's going to be close, though. There's so much time to be found. Right, I can definitely get below two minutes, definitely. That's a 2 dead point 2 with a terrible middle bit. Yes, come on, come on please, it's going to be so close. Please be a 59. Yes, 159.985, oh it was so close in the end. Oh wow, okay. So that was literally just half an hour of driving and I managed to do exactly what I planned which was break into the 59s and get closer than three seconds away from the time that I set on the wheel after about four or five laps so yeah that wasn't so bad at all. So then even on a more serious sim such as ACC the controller and chase camera setup that so many people love actually works fine. I reckon a qualifying time in the 159s would probably see me do okay in many online lobbies. I just don't think it would be possible to be right at the top in a highly competitive esports league. The sensitivity of the analog stick was probably the hardest thing for me to get used to, but even then it's just a lot trickier to be perfectly precise. What Jason was able to do at Snetterton was incredibly impressive, and I'm not sure whether I could ever get to that level if I used a controller full time. However, even though Jason was competitive, he was still a small amount of time away from the ultimate pace of the field, and I'm just not sure whether those alien lap times are really possible. What I would love to see is whether or not someone like Jason could transfer those controller skills onto a wheel, and if he could be even quicker. Anyway. That's not the end of this test. I want to take a trip back to my childhood to see just what could be done using a keyboard. Here's how I got on. So it's now time to try out the keyboard and again it's not something I have any experience with. I think the last time I used a keyboard for proper kind of sim racing style gaming was probably Race 07 back in the day. So it's been a while. Just going to try and get familiar with the controls. I'm actually going to go with the classic controls that I'm used to from when I was a kid. Anyone else remember Spacebar B? This one's a bit harder to predict. I don't really know what to expect, so um, 
I guess I'm just going to have to do my first few laps, get a feel for it, and if I can actually drive it, then try and work out a target. Because for all I know, it could be quite close to the to the gamepad, but I wouldn't be that surprised if it was a lot harder as well. We'll just have to see if it's optimized or not. Oh, this is weird. Using a keyboard to rev the car. All right, let me change the camera angle. Let's do um, bonnet view for this one, because we haven't done bonnet view yet. Another popular sim racing angle. I sometimes use bonnet view um, when I'm doing proper sim racing, if I have the option to. Oh, this is this is such a throwback already. This feels so weird. All right, let's see. So this is like constantly pressing the the buttons on the keyboard uh, to try and get the proper turn in, and then lifting off them as quickly as possible to try and balance the car. Oh, okay, not so bad through turn one. This one, the tr the tricky thing about this is balancing like when to hold down the steering and when to just dab it. My front left tire is 29.5 psi, which. If you're not familiar with ACC, is very high indeed. Obviously, the biggest difference with the keyboard is there's no modulation, so you know the throttle's very much on or off, and you're relying on traction control. The brakes very much on or off. You're relying on ABS, and the steering is also on or off. So if you hold it down, maybe it steers a little bit further. I'm not quite sure how that works, but obviously the game's got some kind of technology. 204 in the first lap, exactly the same as I started off with on the on the pad. The hardest thing I'm finding so far is getting the power down early out of the corners without kind of oversteering because you want to ease out the, the steering and kind of let the car drift to the outside but you can't control that at all. You know, if you let go, you just kind of go straight on and if you keep it pressed, you're going to just steer too much in the exit. So it, that is something that's, you know, going to really hinder your ultimate performance potential. This is actually a fun challenge. I'd recommend you guys go and do this if you haven't done it for years. Like, it's it's um, such muscle memory playing on a keyboard again. It's, it's brilliant. I love it. Across the line, it's going to be a 202.5. Happy with that. I do feel like though I'm, I'm going to reach the limits quicker on this. Oh, that was honestly amazing that turn one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to get below two minutes on this because I feel like I've got less room for improvement with the lack of uh, options in, in my steering inputs and acceleration and brake inputs. I'm going to just take the next corner in cockpit cam because I want to I want you to see what I mean. So as I'm coming out of the corner, obviously like every time I let go, the steering wheel straightens up. So if I let go here, just a little bit, trying to straighten up, the the car goes like, the steering basically goes 100% straight all of a sudden. So, you know, you can't really ease off your inputs. You've either got to keep the lock on, at which point, you know, he rotates a huge amount of steering, which is why my tires are overheating. Or you let go, and suddenly the car is going straight, and you lose all the weight on the tire. So that's what's tricky about it. It looks really funny from this cockpit view, actually. Okay, this has been the best lap so far by quite a long way. It's going to be a low 201, 201.2, not bad. I think that's going to be me. I'm sure I could find another few tenths, maybe break into the two minute deads on the keyboard, but uh, <laughs> you know, I think I've learned all I need to learn um, when it comes to this. It's not quite as quick as a gamepad because you don't have as much of an influence on, on the inputs, but it's actually really good fun. Like I'm really enjoying just laughing with the keyboard uh, and you know, full credit to those people who could be really competitive in an online league using a keyboard or a gamepad, like f full marks, it's incredible. I feel like the keyboard was probably the most frustrating of the lot. It was all about the corner exits. You couldn't ease off the steering input like normal, so you either had to keep it on full lock with the button pressed, or stop steering altogether, which made it tricky. Besides that though, it really wasn't bad at all, and it was a pretty fun challenge to be fair. So, what have we learned? Well, if you don't have the money, space, or desire for a wheel, you can still get to a pretty high level within sim racing you just might not be able to get quite the same ultimate speed that you would manage with a wheel. Kind of a predictable conclusion really, but the nice thing for me was that even as a regular wheel user, I still found the alternative controls manageable and user friendly on a sim without changing any of the assists. Happy days! If you want to see more racing game or sim racing related comparison videos and experiments, make sure you're subscribed to the Traction channel and hit the notification bell if you're feeling extra sciencey today. Until next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching, and have a great day.